अपडेट और खबरों के लिए टीवी वन इंडिया को सब्सक्राइब करें और नोटिफिकेशन पाने के लिए बेल आइकॉन को दबाना मत भूलें। When she started, she was working in plant science. She was breeding new varieties of plants for your consumption. In her 15 years in the company, she went from doing that to managing a farm. She went uh, an experimental farm. She went from that to running what they call the parent seed program. And she was shipping seeds from California, USA, all over the world. She said, Papa, she said, do you say the name of that town, Poon? I said, no, it's Pune. <laughs> and in Britain, it's Puna. But it's not Poon. <laughs> okay. You know that place, no? <laughs> Bon Pase. <laughs> okay. She had never heard of it, but I explained it was Pune. All right? And then, you know what job they gave her after that? Marketing. She has no training in marketing. But she had to be ready to move from her speciality to stay in that company and to advance. She had to be ready and flexible and, and boundary adjusting in such a way that she could move from one department to the next. Are you preparing that? Or are you being very narrow? You'll never be the leader. You'll never be the entrepreneur until you can think beyond your speciality. What are the specialities that we need? Are you preparing for those, please? This is what somebody said in 2017 will be the key jobs for you when you get out of school in one to two years. Are these the jobs you're preparing for? In the school where I teach in North Pare, we have a special course in research and business analytics. We're preparing people and they're in such demand. Are you prepared? Maybe not. Maybe you don't have the skills of Python or R programming, but you understand business data? You don't have to know how to run the programs. You need to know how to use the data. Are you prepared for that? Are your courses preparing you? If not, maybe you should do a little studying on the side. Don't wait for the world to tell you what you need to learn. You take, you take autonomy. You take your own decision. You say, you know, I'm interested in that. I want to be a well-prepared manager for the future. I don't want to be a flunky. I want to be a boss. I don't want to be a job seeker. I want to be a job creator. I want to create wealth for myself, my family, and the country. You look after these things. Look at that list. But you want to get even a little bit more far out. Does anybody like science fiction? OK, click, please. Here are, we'll wait for Sergeant to see. OK, now look at these jobs of the future. How many of you are thinking about being a space pilot? <laughs> Or a memory transfer specialist, you know, like Spock in Star Wars with the Vulcan, Vulcan mind memory, yeah, you know that. Okay, this is where the world is going. Maybe we won't get there. Maybe there will never be a memory restoration. But are you thinking just today, are you just thinking one narrow speciality? I want to do finance. Areva, good for you. Be a nice finance guy. Be a nice finance lady. Or are you thinking, I want to be in the trend. I want to be the leader. This is where your mind has to go. So boundaries of, of, of specialities are changing. Look at my daughter's career. Think about your future career. You may not be pigeonholed like in the past, only finance the rest of your career. You may have to shift. Please be ready. Click please. Now, not only do you think beyond your speciality, are you thinking beyond your industry? Now, many of you have not decided what industry you want to work in. That's OK. In our, in our, in our society, we often let our recruiter decide our speciality and our industry. But if you have an industry preference, you like cars, you want to work in the auto industry, you like uh, uh, energy, you want to work in the energy field, you like healthcare, you want to work in the healthcare field, you can make that decision now and that will guide your recruiters because you'll be naturally uh, uh, attracted to apply for certain jobs and the recruiters will see, this kid is interested in my field. I want her. I want him. Okay? So let's click once and look at a product that I purchased in the 1980s. This is called Encyclopedia Britannica. Anybody have an encyclopedia in your house? Yeah. I'm one of the last people to actually buy one. <laughs> I talk about being future ready. I was not future ready. I met a man in an airport. He was selling them. And I said, I want that. Because back in that day, when you wanted to know something, you opened a book. Sir was talking about the old ways are the best ways. I'm not sure on this one. 
<laughs> but I love, from the time I was a child, I loved learning from books, okay? And I would look up things. My, my children used to say, Papa, you belong to the Mr. Look It Up Club. <laughs> Anytime we're talking about something and we didn't know, we would look it up. Do you do that? Are you hungry for knowledge? When, when a question comes up, do you actually look for it? Okay, and this was the number one name globally in encyclopedias. Encyclopedia means it, it has all the knowledge. Can you imagine all the knowledge of the world in 30 volumes? Unimaginable. <laughs> what a small idea. Why do you think this leading company, they were better than the Americana, they were better than the World Book Encyclopedia, why do you think they went out of business? Do you think another encyclopedia publisher came and knocked them out of business? They knew their industry. They were number one in the industry. Who put them out of business? Quick, please. An internet company. They weren't watching for that. They were looking at all the other encyclopedia publishers, all the other book companies, and they said, we can beat them. And then here come two guys from Stanford who come up with an algorithm to search websites and What's their mission of Google? Does anybody know? To make all the knowledge of the world available. Now if you need some information, do you open up a, 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 an encyclopedia? Heck no. You can get 7.8 lakhs of answers to your query in 0 0.4 seconds. <laughs> Google, from an unexpected industry, drove Encyclopedia Britannica out of business. Let's look at another project. Click. This is Barnes & Noble. Here we have crosswords. There, there they had Barnes and Nobles. You know, you like books, you go and you sit in a lovely bookstore and maybe have a cup of coffee and, and read and pick and they handle the book. They feel so nice and they smell so good now. Okay? Who drove them out of business? Does anybody know? Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Click. Again, they weren't looking at an online seller putting them out of business, but like Jeff Bezos loves to say, your margin is my opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever business you're in, somebody might displace you from the net. And let's look at another one. This is representative of what I used to go to when I lived in Delhi. If I wanted to go by, you know, across to town and I didn't want to take the metro or an auto, I would call my taxi staff. And they would send a taxi over to me, a nice Kali P, and I would go where I wanted to go now. Okay? Who put them out of business? Yeah. The world's largest taxi company. How many taxis do they own? Zero. None. Zero. Okay? They don't own any taxis. So what I'm saying is, if you think you're going to have a nice, safe career, my gosh, you know, who, who would have expected that uh, Airtel and Vodafone, kings of the mobile world, what kind of a company is threatening them? An oil company. An oil company. You've been to the Dhirubhaya Body Knowledge Center down the road? I have. I've done work for them. Amazing company. Are you expecting to be disrupted by an oil company? This is what I mean that when you want to have a successful career and you want to be a business leader in India, you must think beyond a single industry. You must look at the collaborations. You must look at the threats. You must look at whole ecosystems. That's the word of the future. Platforms, ecosystems. It's not just you. It's not just your desk. It's not just your department. It's not just your company. It's not just your industry. There's a whole world around you that you must be aware of. And I'm not sure how well we are prepared to start taking that view. I teach P UG and PG students as well. They don't often have a systematic view. I'm not sure why, but they're only focused on a small thing in front of their face. Your job is to learn to look at the big picture. Next slide, please. The next thing you need to think beyond, we talk about adjusting borders. We said adjust the border from your own speciality. We said adjust the border from your own industry. And the third one is look beyond your country. I love India. I'm convinced that we have the best human resources pool in the world. And I think it is an absolute crime that we do not equip you better and we do not exploit you better. And that means we don't put you to use better. India should be number one in the world with our resources, our human resources, our natural resources, our geopolitical situation. We should be number one in the world, and we're not. That doesn't make me happy. I hope it doesn't make you happy. We have much to be proud of, but we have a long way to go. 
One of the statistics that I actually quote rather often, and I hope it shocks us, is that in 1947, when this country got its independence and the country of South Korea got its independence, the two countries had the same gross product per capita. An average Indian and an average South Korean produce the same amount of wealth. Do you know the ratio now? It is 1 is to 15. Do you know which country citizens are producing more wealth? South Koreans. Do you feel good about that? Somehow we have not learned how to create wealth to answer our society's needs, to raise our living standards, to become the global leader that we should. Now why is that? I'm not here to, I'm not here to blame anybody. That's not my purpose. Let's look forward to how you, the next generation of our leaders, can take us to our leadership position where we belong. So if we could have a click, how did they do it? They did it because they're a small country. And they chose the path of globalization long before we thought about it. We had a closed economy. There were reasons for that. We had a license rod. There were reasons for that. We built a tremendous steel industry. We built the largest railroad network in the world. We eliminated famine. Okay, We did many good things. But what we didn't go for was globalization. We didn't go for global trade. We protected Indian businesses for some reasons. But as a result, we didn't get the growth that other countries that didn't have that large you know, base of population, they, they couldn't do it. So if you look at what we're even doing today, we trail most other countries in exports. We don't do that. In fact, we have a negative balance of, 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 uh, of trade. And, and, and uh, if you look at what we're exporting, it's mostly raw materials. Yes, we make some electronics. We do some cars. We, we, we export some cars here to, the, to, to our neighboring regions. Um, but a lot of it is gemstones, uh, energy, uh, like coal, you know, uh, agricultural products. It's very low value exports, not high value add. So we, we've not been thinking, how does a country like China that was so far behind <coughs> us, they've just moved past us. And, and they've zoomed past us so that they're now the second largest economy in the world. And we've taken a slow rate of growth. So what I'm suggesting is that in your generation, all of you were born after liberalization, after 1991. And now you have unprecedented opportunities to, to think globally that your grandparents didn't have and your parents didn't have. Okay? You are the generation that has to take India to the rest of the world. So you need to think beyond your life and your culture. It's great culture. I love it. Let's preserve it. Let's keep everything that's good about India. But what it means we have to learn about people who are outside. See, the Chinese realize that even though they're more, they're more um, chauvinistic than we are, they think that foreigners are devils. At least we have a better philosophy. We have Atiti Devo Baba. If a foreigner comes, we welcome the person. They think foreigners are, are evil and to be and to be taken advantage of. Okay? So they think their culture is so great, but even they were not too proud to adopt what was good from Singapore, from US. Deng Xiaoping went to Singapore and he saw what Lee Kuan Yu had done in this Chinese ethnic culture that they built a great rich society, and he said, I've got to do that in China. They have been under the communist system, very, very low productivity, low wealth. He says, no, we're changing our communist system. They threw out communism. They still have communist party. So the point is, they were not too proud to learn what was good in the West and copy it. I'm not saying that the West is superior. I'm saying there are some things that we can learn, that we should not be ashamed. We should be open to change so that we can prosper. It's our children's future and your children's future that's at stake. And so, again, if the next click, look at where we're doing business today. Okay? Are we selling to the Europeans? Do our goods and... I mean, I came to India, I saw, I saw a rack in a clothing store in, in, in Delhi. It said, export quality. What does that mean? Oh, we're Indians. We buy the lower quality. We send the good stuff to other people. Ugh! <laughs> Made me feel so bad. Why do we settle for less? Why do we think? And yet, when we see China and, and Korea are inventing things that the world wants. Anybody have a Samsung phone? Anybody listen to BTS or K-pop? OK, 
Okay? They're making things that the world wants. We have to figure that out yet. We make cereals and Bollywood films that the world wants. That's it. Okay. What is the, raise your hand if you know the one industry that we invented that the world wants. $180 billion. You don't know what it is? Service. Big deal. Yeah, business process outsourcing. 